No woman can call herself free until she can choose consciously whether she will or will not be a mother. Margaret Sanger was a highly influential person during the early 1900s and she demonstrated leadership through her motives and her belief that women should have the right to choose which contributed to the first wave feminist movement. She left her legacy by advocating for women's rights through the writings she published and the founding of the American Birth Control League. Margaret Sanger was a paragon in the fight for women's rights. She made sure women were able to make their own decisions without consequence. She was born as Margaret Louise Higgins on September 14, 1879. She was one of 11 children, and growing up, she started to think that all of the pregnancies, plus seven miscarriages, had taken a toll on her mother's health. This inspired her to start thinking and learning about the possibilities of women getting to choose whether they will or will not become pregnant. In 1910, Margaret Sanger moved to Manhattan in New York with her husband and three children and worked to become a nurse. The neighborhood they settled into was known for its radical politics at the time, and Sanger's involvement in that world had sparked her interest even more in making a difference. Margaret Sanger spent majority of her nursing career dedicating her time to treating women who had illegally and unsafely attempted abortion. In 1912, Sanger gave up her nursing career and began to write columns for a magazine titled The New York Call. Her two most popular articles were titled What Every Girl Should Know and What Every Mother Should Know. Sanger wrote these articles not only because of her passion for feminism, but also to inform women about the information they were missing about sexual intercourse and the information that could keep them safe from the danger they were facing. Unfortunately, several of her articles were banned from the papers for being too graphic, and then her column was banned altogether. On the contrary, What Every Girl Should Know became a full published book by 1920 and was written by Sanger herself. In 1914, Margaret Sanger had nine charges pressed against her for violation of the Comstock Law which stated that it was a crime to import or distribute any device, medicine, or information designed to prevent conception or induce abortion, or to mention in print the names of sexually transmitted infections. Anthony Comstock, who was a devoted Christian, was often appalled by what he would come across on the city streets. When he discovered the contraceptive industry in the 1860s, he was against the entire idea, as he believed it was lewd, immoral, and promoted promiscuity. In 1872, Comstock traveled to Washington with an anti-obscenity bill, including a ban on contraceptives, which he had drafted himself. The law was passed and unchallenged until Margaret Sanger began her campaign for women's rights and equality. In spite of her charges, Margaret Sanger created her own magazine titled The Woman Rebel, which was intended to challenge the Comstock law directly. She soon fled to Europe under a different name and spent years traveling around. She visited different birth control clinics while she was there. Her visits to these clinics sparked some inspiration and she began to envision setting up a network of birth control clinics across the United States. Sanger returned to America in 1915 after her charges had been dropped and she found that public opinions were beginning to support her. On October 16, 1916, Margaret Sanger opened the first birth control clinic in America only for it to be shut down nine days later. She, along with some of her staff, spent 30 days in jail for once again violating the Comstock law. If anything was going to stop her, it wasn't this. She had begun to start a movement aimed towards achieving women's reproductive freedom. This movement was so powerful that birth control and abortion became legal in many states and better contraceptive methods were beginning to be developed. Texas was one of the few states where abortion remained illegal unless a doctor determined the mother's life was in danger. Norma McCorvey, who was known as Jane Roe, challenged the law against abortion in Texas in 1971 until the case eventually made its way to the Supreme Court. The court took all evidence into account, and then two years later, the law against abortion was invalidated with a 7-2 vote. The Supreme Court decided that no state could restrict abortions during the first three months or trimester of a pregnancy. States were able to create restrictive laws in accordance with the mother's health during the second trimester. The practice could be banned outright during the third trimester. Any state law that conflicted with this ruling was automatically overturned. The rulings were based off of a woman's right to privacy. Margaret Sanger continued to work towards equality when in 1921 she founded the American Birth Control League. The intention of the organization was to advocate for the legalization of contraceptives in the United States and promote women's reproductive rights and health. Sanger founded this organization aimed to focus on solid principles which include that children be conceived by love and that children were born and created of the mother's conscious desire. The American Birth Control League also aimed to work towards freedom of choice in order to make sure that American women would feel like their opinions mattered in subjects that involved their health. 
Margaret Sanger reopened her clinic in 1923 with special permission and named it the Birth Control Clinical Research Bureau, which provided contraceptive devices and collected statistics to prove the effectiveness and safety of the devices. Sanger remarried around this time, and her new husband provided lots of the funding for her efforts for social reform. She wanted to advance her cause even more, so in 1929 she started the National Committee of Federal Legislation for Birth Control. This committee's goal was to make it legal for doctors to freely distribute birth control. Sanger decided to take some time for herself, though that did not last long. She was still highly passionate for the topic, and she continued to work on the birth control issue in several countries in both Europe and Asia. She created the International Planned Parenthood Foundation in 1952. The foundation was a combination of both the American Birth Control League and the Birth Control Clinical Research Bureau, and the principles behind the Planned Parenthood Foundation were ultimately a combination of the principles of the two foundations she established before. She then focused on creating a magic pill or a form of contraception that could be taken orally. She got the proper funding she needed and the help from Gregory Pincus, who was a human reproduction expert. The project was to research more about the possibility of an oral contraceptive, which had been developed and approved by the Food and Drug Administration in 1960. Margaret Sanger was only part of a massive movement aimed towards achieving women's rights, though actions that she took were monumental. Dr. Hava Gordon, who works as the Director of Gender and Women's Studies at the University of Denver, had a very strong opinion of Margaret Sanger, describing her as innovative because she battled the issue on a number of fronts. She opened clinics, put out information. She was very good about trying to build bridges to interested parties. She didn't try just one tactic. With knowledge coming from an overall movement perspective, Dr. Hava Gordon provides an understanding in which Margaret Sanger's actions affected the decisions and actions of those after her, and goes on to say, Within the movement, Margaret Sanger was a hero in many ways in her work. The women also, and some of the men, men allies, behind her, were really important in linking issues of gender equity to birth control. She was really an incentive in making birth control a public political issue, when many people were tempted to see it as just a women's duty and a private issue not to be talked about in the public square. Her legacy gives us direction for our movement today and keep that as a public political issue, even as a human rights issue. Margaret Sanger led a long life of 87 years before passing away in a nursing home in Tucson, Arizona in 1966. Her efforts have not been forgotten as many women's clinics across the nation still carry the Sanger name. The oral contraceptive pill that she had developed is more famously known as the pill and has benefited women across the nation. Despite the controversy and the problems that she encountered in her life, Margaret Sanger was determined to speak for the women of America and to give them the rights she felt they deserved.